okay good evening everybody and today we're gonna rush a bit uh, for uh, trying to uh, describe a bit the, the criteria or suggestions or uh, tricks uh, for uh, visual design as we started uh, uh, last week's already uh, to uh, to study and um, the general um, topics uh, that compose visual design actually are all the visual elements uh, in uh, in the screen uh, text uh, layout and colors we'll try to touch more or less some some ideas about all these topics of course we are doing let's say one hour or so of visual design uh, there are uh, entire degrees uh, where they study these topics and so we cannot uh, become masters in design today but at least uh, we can try to focus on the most important elements of course uh, the most important element uh, in design is we already mentioned it last week uh, is uh, spacing now space uh, is uh, uh, the, the key ingredient that gives meaning to all the other stuff so uh, we we saw some examples of some websites uh, where let's say intuitively we can recognize some elements their role their functionality thanks to some conventions and some visual hints in some way so uh, let's try to analyze uh, how can we say that uh, or can we say that these elements are related and these other in the right are different or so why huh? what, what are the the element that help us in distinguishing between this menu and the menu at the top and the one on the left so there are all places where we can link but we can at we we immediately attribute a role uh, to each of them and some sort of connections so i i just want to make a flash uh, on some basic principles that are related to the they come from psychology and they're related to the perception okay uh, how we perceive uh, shapes how our brain processes what we see uh, so they are uh, basically psychology principle we, we won't go in deep into these uh, principles of course uh, but uh, our processing of the images follows some rules and so the design will use these rules to give meaning to visual elements hmm? um, there are several of these principles no, that are sort of rules that describe how we see how we perceive elements no? for example let's pick the first one i try to put in the left column the one that are most important for us and the right one the others uh, there's no definite list so psychologists are always arguing which 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 one is more important or whatever but the first one is uh, we are able to distinguish the foreground from the background mm -hmm. the figure uh, or the, the foreground with respect to the background and uh, uh, the foreground is uh, uh, something solid stable in front of something else that may be maybe more um, fuzzy or fuzzy or, uh, or uncertain so we are able to uh, identify immediately the foreground of a, of a, of a picture mm -hmm. uh, and in some way ignore the background or maybe we can closure we can close in our mind some pictures we we'll see some examples of this some shape which is missing some corners or whatever uh, we immediately complete the missing pieces mm -hmm. our brain does it automatically so we perceive it as a full shape instead of a separate um, pieces uh, elements that are in the same region are perceived as a group hmm? and principle like this we we'll see some examples in details of those uh, proximity is also another important principle objects that are close to each other we perceive them as more related than objects that are at a higher distance they are separated by a higher distance and so on so let's see some examples in practice uh, 
figure ground foreground background separation how do you use that in design okay in the the right picture we have a title of our website we it stands out as the foreground and the background is this picture from space okay so this one is you know fixed and solid and uh, it's literally on top of something else so we immediately classify this as being the background and this text uh, as being the foreground mm? and the same goes here on the left uh, where we have these icons and these arrows and so on that are put on top of something else so it's immediately clear that this what happened okay the kid the this uh, uh white rectangle here is in a way the background for this icon here. and this icon is the background for this uh caption or for the, the orange one hmm? so we have a sort of this is on top and so it, it relates it refers to this character and this character refers to or oh, is on top of that so we build a hierarchy of foregrounds and background if we look at these elements it is the foreground for this for the white and the background for the uh, for the brown or orange and so we understand relationship between elements just by how front they look to us hmm? of course there are some cases like you know the optical illusions like right there where we are trying to trick you know, the brain into seeing some image as a for or background in different moments but these are special cases where our automatic recognition of the foreground fails uh, because the image is tricky hmm? it, it at first sight uh, the black one is the foreground when you look closely it's something else tries to emerge because we are trying to close this shape here because we don't like open shapes so there are different perception principles that conflict each other so our perception um, sort of shifts or oscillates hmm? similarity so uh, immediately we, we if we have a set of elements we see immediately which are the groups of similar ones so we instinctively we see a square in diagonal square here made of, of circles inside a lot of triangles and we see the the picture on the right as columns okay because there are similar items that we assume in implicitly that they should be related so that's why in the La Stampa website we decided that the articles on the right should be different in some way from the articles in the center because these ones are more similar to each other than to the others which are similar some among themselves why just because of a very light background that's enough for making it's not a distance a separate you see that the separation here is the same it's just this background that automatically tells us that these are something different there's also another small difference that you have the video sign here and not here but no it's not it's less conclusive because we also have a video sign here so there it's not the main rule hmm? it's, it's some reinforcing but so it could also be confusing because there's no uh, real uh, separation hmm? so things that look similar should be similar and things that things that don't look similar should be different you know in a way so if we want to mark differences we just have to play on some attributes some visual attributes hmm? and for example we have uh, one two three four four input elements in this page this is github and we will never couple this one with the others we know that these three are related because they are in the same shape the same position close to each other and this one is unrelated it's because it has a different background different font different size different uh, alignment so it, it must be something different we have no doubt about that we perceive all of these even before the image comes to our conscious mind we already pre-classified some parts of the image we'll come back to this uh, uh, pre-classification later hmm? uh, proximity close in space means close in meaning uh, so how can we say 
whether this caption is about the picture above or below because it's closer and it's further from the other one it's not much but it's enough we are magnetically trying to attract a label to an object so the magnet will go to the closest one this one will be more difficult if we didn't have any context there's too much space on top here on the top here you see so if you look, look that, uh, that at this po portion of the picture in isolation it will be more you won't have a rule to associate this label to the top or to the bottom image only the context can give you that so we see how strong it is uh, look at the picture on the top right you immediately see three groups it means that group that distance proximity is stronger than similarity because the red dots are similar and the, but we don't perceive the, the red dots together we perceive three columns inside each column we have the similarity rule that says okay this column is separated into black and red but first the, the strongest sign is proximity which is also one of the interpretation of why sp space white spacing is so important which is one of the, uh, the strongest messages we have a lot of labels here we have a picture a label another label another label but all of the all of these are attracted to this first image they are related because they are close to each other so we can stick together even more than one element also the data and the link at the b and the top they are all they are all around the image in a close proximity so they should be about that image then we have a space that resets our perception say okay this one now something else is starting hmm? so we just play with spaces if we want something stronger than spaces we have containers so the dots in the top right uh, are at the same distance but there are some rectangles to group them so if we don't want to play with distance we can play with containers it's it's more heavy to the eye okay it's stronger uh, as a stronger message but it can accomplish for example this is a, a facebook post where you see that the post and the comments are all inside a single frame the, it has a very a, a, a bit lighter background than the real background of the page and so it stands out as one region inside this region we have the post and we have the comments and the post is made of some element title description image all of them are included in one rectangle and all the comments are included in another rectangle are separated by ju just by lines so we have this very light rectangles made of a, a very thin border or a very slight variation in background that are enough for us to make a grouping so we can have maybe something more complex like the um, stack overflow web page it has a lot of item packed they, they don't use many spa much space they use backgrounds and, and separators and regions to separate items and not spacing because they want to put many answers in one page to to improve the search recognition hmm? and the same is here when we have many badges regions of different shapes uh, different sizes no, sorry not different shapes. there are rectangles but there's different sizes so it would be difficult to play only on spacing and distances because some is larger than the other and so they relied on, on framing and making uh, a region a rectangle with a different background grouping all the elements of a single image so these elements uh, in this case are three or four in this case are longer but they they know who they belong to because they, there's a, a frame around them hmm? uh, another principle what do you see in the top there's a straight line from left to right and uh, curved line from top left to bottom right so the continuity of the line is stronger than the color the color would say that there are, there's a oh sorry there's a sharp edge here tuck here from the red and a sharp edge there the, the discontinuity or a change of uh, um, of slope we we tend to perceive the the the, 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 the linear progression of steps 
so we naturally seek for continuation of sequences and so it means that elements that visually may be different at different colors but they are similar in shape for example for us they immediately stand up as a sequence they should have something in common they continue if we have this arrow they will it will tell us that they will continue even farther even if we don't see them hmm? and we, we have a wizard-like interface here step one two three we are naturally seeing them as part of the sequence it's not like the news or the newspaper which are unrelated here they are laid out in a specific line in a specific direction so we in we tend to give a, um, a direction uh, to that uh, to that sequence so these are but, oh, the closure principle it's not very it's usually a lot on, on graphics on logo and so on so you all see a zebra like there up there even if it's not closed so they are just especially the legs of the zebra are open but we our brain closes it we, we even have the impression to, that it stands up from from the sheet of paper okay but it just and so like the ibm all the log or many logs just play on this is there a heart here no there are, there are only white petals or whatever but we make the art out of the space uh, by completing these uh, lines that are missing hmm? so uh, our brain already does it. it is not very, not much used for layout uh, more for graphical uh, issues and the other one very strong the the first thing you, you focus on this page is the red button or the green button in the right one why because it's the only element which is so different for, for from all the rest like in the top picture is the only one which is red and square and uh rotated and so it's different from the others we immediately our attention is immediately attracted to that okay and so if we have uh, all the website for example in the left uh, is uh, all dark or white but that's an element of color only one so that would be the first point of attention users will see this button before they even see all the rest the second point of attention the logo because it stands out for a brighter color and a different font stronger font then we, they, they will see the rest even the title will come later it attracts less attention because we immediately say that our brain say okay that should be a title so a text on a background hmm? but these ones stand out so we first check out why are they strange hmm? maybe it's a tiger hiding in the woods so our brain is uh, used to trying to spot tigers inside the one when they were there in 60,000 years ago but the brain didn't evolve so much so it was uh, it's very good at spotting uh, the anomalies hmm, in some way in an image okay so these are the general principles how do they relate to to actual visual the visual grammar so the the tricks and the tools that we have for creating web pages okay there will be a lot to say about text hmm? text is a very complex element uh, we may know some of that when we are we're processing documents we can change the font the sizes and so on but actually there's a lot of uh, uh, hidden design inside each uh, typeface uh, uh, so for example you we know that about the point size the the, the, sh the size of the uh, of the font which is uh, uh, more or less equivalent uh, to the height of the text uh, the height of the text uh, usually is divided from uh, a, a central body from a baseline to a basic height which is also called the x8 so it means the 8 of the letter x lowercase x uh, we are, don't have any axis here but also the a d they have this height so basically every font has a most of the signs inside these two lines from the baseline to the x8 
and some of the letters go above or below so they are they are the ascenders or descenders of the letters and basically from our eye uh, we identify the letters from these many cases from these ascenders and descenders uh, if you try to to uh, say blur the central part uh, of a text uh, it's very easy to still read it just we have basically two hints ascender descenders and uh, open and close open letters and close letters so there's a lot of details that make us recognize font very easily hmm? of course every font uh, has a different uh, uh, spacing so some are denser some are wider in some the the ratio between the height of the capital letters and the height of lowercase letters is they are very close like in this case in some cases they are very far apart so the cap this lower lower case are much smaller than the upper case they're good for styling but they're not very good for real readability and so there's a lot of, of theory about uh, uh, how to construct this uh, how to exploit fonts hmm? there's a long story about uh, serif or sans serif uh, fonts there was a time where they say that uh, uh, you know the serifs are these small feet uh, that are around the, the decorations uh, on in the base lines on the top of some letters uh, they were saying that uh, if I say in lower resolution displays it's usually better to have a non serif font so a font with straight bars just because the serif at the lower resolution are more noisy than other today we don't have many low resolution displays even on smartphones so it's questionable which one is more readable there were studies well there are no no studies that conclude whether a series or non-series font is more or less re readable than the other so from the readability from the speed of reading they are more or less equivalent they found that the differences in reading speed or understanding speed are more uh, from individual persons so each user is different from the other rather than from the effect of the typeface so it's not a uh, real issue but it's usually uh, we want to if, if we want to exploit uh, similarity or differences like in design principles we can play on those so we may have a serif font for the titles and a non-serif font for the body or vice versa so it's it's a one additional hint that, that makes the two categories of text uh, different from each other you can change the font if you have a sideline with a different meaning so even a small change of font uh, within limits because you cannot have more than two or three fonts in the same page otherwise it become becomes uh, and uh, for example the google material design uh, guidelines uh, suggest only this set of uh, fonts as a standard ones so if you are building uh, an application with the standard uh, guidelines uh, they only use use one typeface one type of font the roboto one in different sizes in different weights uh, weight means uh, bold or not bold or semi bold or extra bold uh, size and uh, um, the case uh, you know, normally sentence case in some cases they force the all capital for example a button should have a all capital label in material design hmm? and the letter spacing that in some cases is increased from the default uh, spacing letter spacing is the distance from each other so from letter to letter this is the spacing so it can be increased or decreased uh, to give more or less air to a text so in this case they made uh, some designer made us this list uh, we see that uh, for example for a caption the letters are not just smaller but they are also more dense packed together because there's a, a smaller line spacing than other, in other cases hmm? so uh, and a lot a lot of a list of these uh, are in a way a coherent uh, set of fonts to use It may be confusing because for example the heading 2 and heading 3 for me are not very clear because heading 2 is bigger but lighter 
adding three is smaller but stronger so it's not uh, so clear which one is uh, if you see them in line of course it's easy but if you see them in different parts of the pages mm, which one is more important than the other is not so because they are playing both of the on uh, font sizes you see 16 48 and on the weight light and regular so there are some cases when in which it's not so easy to come out with a set of good fonts hmm? for example and uh, text also helps uh, so the attributes of text uh, also help us in giving some hierarchy so for example this is an, an example of a, a hypothetical paying uh, uh, page where you can pay and they say that the left one is bad and the right one is good why uh, because uh, uh, what is the most important information in this page do you confirm yes so these two elements that are the most important ones should be in a font size that attracts attention the most stronger all the rest for example the uh, the person who is paying or the who's uh, has a credit card uh, from which the money is, is taking and also the destination where the money is going are less important than the real question in this page so it looks like from this page it looks like that, that the confirmation button will be a confirmation for the name in, in my eyes because what i'm confirming this is blue big this is blue big so this is the confirmation for this not for this, this is a title it's, a, it's a, at the top and at the top we always have titles and in this case it's much clearer that we are confirming the payment also the total is stronger and bigger hmm? so the size and the prominence of the text uh, helps us crea creating connections between this title this total and this button so again we always start from what is the information that we want to communicate to the user what are the most important ones and so how we use the text attributes and the spacing attributes to give importance to this information but also leave all the other information on the page because it's also important to know the number of the credit card and uh, uh, the, the amount and, the and so on well, the other information is also important we shouldn't just delete that but it will be available if we if the user wants to have a second look but the first look uh, uh, the, the 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 we we have a ranking of what is more important and what is less important in a page for text and uh, in this case we have a very linear layout from top to bottom but if i'm in a bigger space we all we have uh, by uh, two-dimensional layouts uh, and many of these two-dimensional layouts, uh, not all of them, but many of them are based on grids. It's an easy way to be able to reason about a higher, let's say, uh, granularity than pixels. Okay, we don't want to think about pixels. And for example, let's take this dialog window, one of the many dialog windows in WhatsApp PowerPoint, probably. And if you look. Uh, we have two columns left and right and in the right column we have different portions of items which are all aligned in a way and for example there's this, this option here which is a bit more indented than the other ones huh? that one in the, uh, the third one here so what does it mean it means that this is a sub option of that one so this is what the our the eye perceives huh? our eyes so the designer decides some vertical lines on which to align the main elements so the left uh, the first line here is for, for aligning the titles the gray line the gray bars the second aligns the check the check boxes the third one aligns the second level check boxes and so all the rest is aligned according to these grids and when we have some input boxes they also are aligned on the same vertical line 
except this one this is a mistake it's a design mistake it should have been here because why is it there and also all of them are aligned on this right line except the first one why is it shorter so probably they overlooked these design details but the general rule the general uh, feeling is that we have some vertical rulers that will tell us where items of a given type a title a checkbox a second level checkbox are supposed to start and to end or or an input text and so on uh, and we see that in the in the guidelines for example for this one is a guideline from visual studio in windows they will tell you how to align items and say okay, if you have uh, some input elements uh, put the label on the top and the input below and align all of them at the same left with the same left alignment uh, uh, position in this case you you see that this vertical line is also indented with respect to the first box and the first check box means that these two items are under the first checkbox they are only valid if the checkbox is marked just this alignment tells you that alignment brings hierarchy brings grouping hmm? so they are here uh, the, the guidelines also give <coughs> go into much more detail by telling you how, how many pixels you, sh you should use depending on what kind of elements are you trying to to divide the margin from the title the distance between the different uh, input items items and so on so each guideline you we already saw them in a specific technology they go into great detail but they help you in being consistent also in your interface uh, and this goes a long time ago these guidelines are from 1999 99 or 9 20 years ago hmm? and it was for java no? java uh, graphical libraries they already told you about grids and distances and so on of course the numbers were different the fonts uh, and the the visual appearance for us uh, is not it's bad today we don't like it because not in our taste because the, the visual aspect has changed and evolved along the years but the general principles are still the same hmm? and uh, what is a what are the elements of a of a grid layout uh, basically i show them visually first of all we have a page the container the container has some some margins on the four sides so the real content is inside the margins so we should we should decide the margins of our uh, page of our dialog of our application and then the margin is divided in, in many columns and every column each column is separated from the next one by a small space which is called the gutter okay we have a, an alternating columns and gutters column and gutter column and gutter and so on usually all the columns are the same size and all the gutters are also of the same size usually we, we should not write in the gutter unless we are making a multi-column content all the content should be aligned in these columns so maybe one column wide two three six but should also always start at the beginning of a column and should always end at the end of another column in that way we have, we have a flexible way of laid out, laying out items but still maintaining a sort of vertical consistency like this here for example we use this grid these columns and we made the one four column block and another four column block and this from the vertical point of view from the horizontal point of view we may also mark some lines and there are two type of uh, horizontal lines base lines it's a line where the content will uh, attach on top so it's sort of a it will touch the bottom margin of the content so it goes for titles for example where if the title is longer then the box will grow higher but the baseline will, will remain the same will not overflow in below but it will overflow above and uh, in other cases we have hang lines 
lines from which the content is hanging down hmm? so it depends on the type of usually the content may, be, may become longer usually hung from a initial line that gives the start line for all the content and this combination of a baseline with a hang line creates a space here and space means that the meaning of the blocks below here are is different from the meaning of the blocks on the top so those are maybe titles and then content or or, or navigation and articles they should be different hmm? if we want we can also have a, a grid of baselines so all these blocks here don't have an arbitrary length but they should snap to the closest maybe 12 pixels or so so it's normal our eyes doesn't complain if it sees blocks of different sizes but it will complain if, they, if it sees blocks that are much, much very very similar except one or two pixels then they look strange they look uh, disaligned unaligned there was a joke that uh, the windows calculator i don't know if today is still uh, so no not prob probably not this version in windows 10 because you see that all the buttons are aligned in a grid if you take the older versions pick a uh, windows 7 or windows xp or what or, or older and you look closely the buttons are not really aligned some of them are one or two pixels off the, on, on, the, they are too high or to uh, left and so on and it's once you notice that it, you you can't unsee that and uh, you always will always hurt your, your eyes because some uh, detail they say okay why is that hmm? it's not enough for giving you meaning it's just enough for giving you nastiness so for example a combination of all these rules says that we have uh, a margin left and right the green ones some columns some gutters and you see that the blocks uh, cover the two columns uh, but leave the gutter from the next block that we also cover two columns and so on hmm? and horizontally we have a block here with a baseline a header that will always uh, also have a baseline and the content that will hang from uh, this top line and so on hmm? so it's a it's an easy way of starting to lay out items starting with the containers not start with the content and then we need to align them and so on hmm? uh, for example as a developers we you probably know the bootstrap library uh, that is in css that defines a 12 column grid 12. Hmm? you don't it's not 7 it's not 34 they decided that 12 is a good number 12 is a good number because it divi is, is divisible by 2 by 3 by 4 by 6 so you can once you have 12 columns defined you you may have a six column six contents of uh, two columns each uh, or four contents of three columns each and so on or, or many other combinations so you can span one column so I, and so i have 12 boxes or span four columns uh, so you have three boxes so have some one-third two-thirds split in the page and so on so you, you work on proportions among, among columns and uh, the definition of the columns in bootstraps also take bootstrap and the in this bootstrap library also takes into account the size of the display so it defines columns in a different way according to the horizontal resolution of the display the number of pixels in a row so you may have an extra small device a small device a medium device or a large device according to the number of pixels and then you can create uh, what are called uh, the responsive layouts uh, where you have a content that uh, on large devices will render on four columns four real columns of three booster columns each three 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 or on three main columns of contents of four narrower bootstrap columns or if you make it still narrower it will, will go down to two or even to one and how you accomplish that in bootstrap our other libraries have other, other tricks but it's very easy it says that each of these boxes will occupy six columns on a medium display 
four columns in a large display, three columns on an extra large display. That's it. And then all the CSS does all the work uh, of uh, uh, resizing the real shape according to the device uh, white width. Hmm? So in this way, it's very easy to think of a multi-column layout and then have these columns uh, or have these items uh, uh, aligned left to right or top to bottom according to the size of the device. Okay. Uh, the mm, Bootstrap is not the only one. I just put the links uh, here uh, about two different uh, grid systems. For example, 960 is a grid system that is designed for 960 pixels. Fixed white uh, layouts. So they, they, they give you columns and grids, uh, but with a fixed uh, um, size of the image. And this one, unsemantic, is the responsive version developed from 960. So the, there are many libraries like this. If you stick to one, they, it will, the library will do most of the work for you. You just give the layout rules and all the spacing and all the wrapping and the responsiveness according to the device. It will be handled. It's not automatic. It's not magic, but it will be handled by the library. Uh, for example, if we take uh, our older examples, we see the grid that we are using here. So the, the, mm, the orange lines are the main columns here. And the green ones are the columns for the smaller contents. Okay. There's a strange ratio here. If we see, if we look at, this, at the, uh, the, the line, we see that this gutter is not centered in this white space it's more on the left it's a design decision they decided that the title here is more important than the, than the picture and they use this separator on the left uh, hand uh, there will always be a picture and it requires less space than the title and so this line was not actually in the center but a bit on the left hmm? so it's a card sign if you have a grid system to program once you decide that you just have to change the definition of the columns uh, and so the content will in some way adapt or they will uh, uh, resize according to the to the column uh, sizes we recognize a grid also in the our so these are you now we are decomposing the, our screenshots so that we can help understand how we could recognize the elements there hmm? the Horizontal grid were visible. There were lines and containers. The vertical one was implicit, but uh, we parsed that with our eyes. Hmm? So what's that? Okay. This is another example. We, you know this page, uh, where we have uh, also vertical alignment to give uh, you more information, and also indentation and spacing. <coughs> you have the there's a lot of information around each of these items there's the title of the course and then you have the code the language the video recordings the credits the teacher the semester all of that is more or less recognizable because everything is aligned with the main topic if i had to put a vertical line i would put it here where most of the content is hanging right and so this means that the, the most important information which is also prominent from the point because it's the only one which is underlined is the text everything else is around it the code is below the the, the other codes are on the left uh, or on the right but they are aligned in a way hmm? so it's not very nice looking but it's clear there are there are two different attributes something that is nice to look at this is not this is ugly but the information is clear there's no possibility of misunderstanding a code uh, this code is for this course of no for the other one it, uh, it's not ambiguous because it uses this very simple grid-like system and uh, I, I found a screenshot of uh, amazon from 2015 which is only four years ago, and compared to the, screen, to the same screenshot in 2015, 
2019 you see that the same form changed the layout a bit so at that time there was this hanging right hanging left layout with a center line and all the labels on the left and all the uh, inputs on the right today there's more uh, one column fixed with uh, design with labels on top of each uh, text label it's design style hmm? it's cleaner to si to see because we have uh, the clean right uh, instead of a rag the right border in some cases it's a bit uncomfortable because if you have to write uh, you know um, a number for example the zip code which is a short code here and you have a lot of, of free space there so it once it's filled uh, maybe this one's more consistent because uh, the, the, the zip code is shorter than the address line because the data is shorter by its nature hmm? so this one is more modeling the data and the other one is more uh, visually pleasing in some way there's also a difference between putting hints close to the text or putting hints inside the text people are arguing hmm? nielsen says that it's better to put it outside or maybe they would put it close to the to the label in the top with a smaller font because they said that once you click here these uh, these hints disappear so if you have to remember them if you have them written here you just have to recall hmm? uh, recognize no, recognition over recall um, so in a in layout you start with the longest block of text and try to lay out all the rest if possible usually do left align align text which is faster to read and uh, and try to always use hmm, some a uh, few alignment lines uh, and try to bring everything consistent except when you want something to stand out so everything should be well, very well aligned if, if you can if, if you want you can deviate a bit from the alignment if you want some uh, element uh, to uh, to be recognized immediately because the, it's the first thing that the, the, your eye will catch this is wrong it's in one position so if you want to attract attention maybe an error message a uh, warning condition don't align it make it make it slightly misaligned hmm? okay colors colors are a strong tool and uh, you know this example we already saw that uh, which is easy to use in the wrong way hmm? so uh colors uh, it's a question yeah this one okay uh which one is better uh if you ask Amazon in 2015, they would have said uh, the, le the left one, and today they would have said the right one. Okay. So design also evolves. It evolves because it has to follow conventions. Uh, the right one is more consistent wa with what you will find in your mobile phone. The user interface for mobile phones doesn't have, uh, for the forms, all the form elements are full width. If you create a form they will always have so also the mobile version has been adapted and our eyes are accustomed to this kind of vertical layout uh, with the uh, full width uh, uh, so this one is <coughs> is cleaner mm. um, uh, yes I, I would not go back to the to the left one today but but i don't know if it's because we have been accustomed to the to this layout or, or because for example today hmm, i find these labels too strong this bold text here is too strong on the eye so it, it, the label attracts more attention than the content hmm? this is not uh, so in this case the labels are there to help you but they are not uh, invasive the text the empty boxes are attracting i need to fill those no? you urge to fill them 
because it's the main information the main visual information you have a lot of boxes to fill in this la left picture you have a lot of labels hmm? so i would say the right one is better hmm? but uh, probably at, at, the, at the time uh, that was you know amazon have the resources to do everything right they do all the usability studies and so on so at that time that was the best it evolves over time the basic principles remain but now we also have it's another dif difference in that we have better resolution displays so on uh, this text here on a smartphone of four or five years ago would have been probably harder to read hmm. so uh, you could not have make it much much larger so you you need to make some space for it so you might bring it out hmm. these were more similar to the old forms uh, in in desktop programs in office programs and so on in excel in access programs labels and text so more classical this one is more derived from mobile uh, convention today we i will see more of this they allow you to give more information around each each element in a way um, okay so colors again as all the design elements should be used carefully and sparingly you should not exaggerate one good hint is uh, start uh, by designing in grayscale only so white black and one or two shades of gray and make your interface understandable with just these four levels then you can decide whether the light gray would be green or uh, yellow or uh, uh, light blue or whatever but you already know that you have a light shade and dark shade a white and a black so you can play with the colors after you already decided uh, the layout of the the um, your system and uh, the visual hints uh, that ensure that uh, your information is conveyed correctly and fully by the layout and by the text so you use the shades for separation for containment for framing you don't care the color what the important thing is that you need to frame the content to group it together later you can choose a color or a set of colors that are good that they work good together in a consistent way hmm? so uh, the idea is start uh, by defining the frames the colors, how many shades you need and then translate the shades to colors by trying to conserve the same level of luminance so if you are white uh, um, a light gray you should have a light color if you have a dark gray you should replace it by a dark color that matches well the light one and so on and most important try to assign meaning to color so all the titles should always have the same color except when you are trying to make a difference again not to make something stand out all the text should have the same color all the menus should have the same color so you define a handful of, of colors and work with those try to stick with those for example stack overflow if you see it in black and white you recognize everything so the color is there to help you but the difference in color here is also visible in the black and white version version we are not losing anything if we had a light yellow and a light green they would both translate to a light gray and there will be confusion in this case I not mentioned that some people are colorblind. That's it's also important, probably. But maybe you are not in a condition to see the color well, and so you you want to be sure that your information is conveyed in the strongest way. The strongest way is spacing, alignment, containment, and text. Then you reinforce that by coloring it, by showing something on top of the basic layout. Uh, also here it's uh, another example of the our website uh, 
uh, which is not so good again because for example this block here and the block below and the one on the top when in black and white they are in the same color so they are the same darkness while in the colored version they are different so there was some sort of confusion in this case so they could have played better uh, also with with the with the colors and so on um okay uh, and by the way there's some important information that is missing so that's i remember i put this uh, uh, highlight uh, box here because here we have some subtle colors uh, blue and orange and red and purple and yellow that correspond to the main section of the website and here they are the differences are lost totally so never give a, uh, some important information relying on color alone always make it also rely on some label or some icon or some shape not just color because it may be lost easily also people don't remember colors so for example this is taken from the polytechnic manual of uh, communication so there's a book that will tell you which color you should use and if you need to have different shades they also give you all the shades of the main color so the polytechnic has yellow and blue as the main color scheme and they also give you which ones so this should be the default tint and this should be the darker one and these the lighter ones and so on and how to couple them with which percentage which uh, saturations and so on so as a designer you will always have to work with those and it's not easy to come out with these color combinations one reason more to work with first before uh, without color and then apply a palette of colors that has been designed by somebody else uh, there are tools to help us for example i just put some google chrome gives you a, a, a palette from the guidelines uh, of colors that are good easy to uh, easy to read on a white background and colors that are easy should be easy to read on a dark background uh, even on small fonts these are the websites uh, uh, if you select one main color it will give you a long list of other colors that give enough contrast contrast with that so in all conditions the combination of the two should be visible and one of them should be a background and the other a foreground you yes, uh, have a lot of combination so there are many websites about about that hmm? okay text alignment colors and the content the content is actually the real content of the website something that the users will read and the different pages will uh, con mm, create a navigation pattern for the user what they say usually is that uh, human beings are informivores so animals that feed with information and if you have ever, ever seen a, a carnivore animal in the wild when they eat uh, something they are really quick at that they try to ingest everything as quickly as possible that's how nature makes them so even uh, human beings try to digest as much information as possible as fast as possible we need to take that into account so first of all we should uh, give clues to the to our informers to our users to where to find information this is becoming annoying um, because they, um, they we need to give them clues to where to find information so food is there information that you are seeking is in that direction click there go there uh, so a lot of uh, small visual hints uh, will be to help navigations you can have uh, task navigations uh, for example um, how to proceed in a given task you know you make a survey you have a some navigation item that let you go forward go back see how far you are in the process so you have in 25 percent 50 percent of the survey and so on and so you know where to go and what's the way and how far is uh, your destination hmm? or in a web website uh, you should have a clear indication about the mm, 
it should be easy to create a real map of the structure of the website which are the main sections in which section you are now so the voice of the ma navigation menu should highlight the current section for example hmm? um, or command menu navigation where you have the all the menus in application say word or powerpoint uh, and so where to find the command you want inside the, the 2000 commands that are in the menu structure and there are different ways of navigating hmm? different tools widgets to help us navigate from menus that are menus are you know a very big topic you may have a menu bar pop-up menus toolbars ribbons uh, uh, a set of icons and so on uh, that are the main uh, you know, uh, way of navigating across different steps or different uh, hierarchies of, uh, of possibilities there are also some gestures that may act as uh, accelerators for some navigation tasks so this is always that we have um, so a button is never there by accident it's there because we want to help the user to reach the next step hmm? uh, gestures are you know uh, good in the mobile uh, website mobile uh, mobile world i would say the problem is that there are not many conventions so usually these are more or less the the main gestures that you ca we can use in our task devices while uh, on a mouse uh, interface i know what click and double click and right click mean usually so you can right click is a property click is selecting double click is executing it's a convention different apps uh, use these uh, gestures in different ways so it's really dangerous to rely on those they are good for accelerators but there are no um, consistency on the meaning of a long tap or a double tap across different applications so in many cases we know uh, the double tap uh, will uh, send a like or something to the to, to the content hmm? but not, al not always not in all applications another tool for selection is uh, buttons check boxes forms you see menus everything that you, you already know uh, exclusive menus or multiple choice menus can be uh, um, implemented as boxes menus are everywhere in our websites uh, we have a top line navigation menu there and a lot of content which is not very uh, pleasant from the color point of view and uh, in the slower resolution the menu is sometimes hidden behind the, the hamburger icon that will tell us okay there will be a menu there I don't have the space to, to show it always but you can bring it up when you want so in some cases you should have hints uh, that the navigation is possible the navigation uh, item is possible and uh, okay once you have menus how do you organize content across the menus uh well it's easy to say that the content should be organized in a meaningful way in a way that the user where the user would expect that so you imagine you have a set of, of boxes with a lot of content and one label in each box and you have to guess in which box any every information will go and the user can only see the label on the box so you have to choose the labels very carefully and to group the contents also in a consistent way so that they can guess right every time so your game is to make the user guess right not guess wrong for for stealing money for them hmm? so this is the the domain of uh, information architecture basically there's a discipline which is called information architecture that will tell you how to construct hierarchies that make sense that are meaningful hmm? and then these uh, organizations can be of different shapes uh, some are more linear like a set, the set of steps uh, in a wizard some are more hierarchical with menus uh, with a website with a first level menu and then second level sections and so on or uh, stranger or more free network like structures so for example in this e-commerce websites website we have a, a three level hierarchy of content 
so we have the main menu here we are in the shop section this is just the menu these are actions a section of the website if we open the, uh, the shop we have a second line with the categories this is a short uh, sports website uh, so there is the first uh, grouping is by sports climb cycle run snow and so on and then we have uh, men women kids and footwear which is not really sports so uh, they are not very good these categories okay because if i'm trying to uh, you know, if I'm searching some for some snow equi equipment for children should they go under snow or under kids mm. so in this way the first level categories are not very clear and then we have a second level categories the, those bold names we don't if we don't read them it's not a problem but we can recognize that, that these are groups of categories with a title and some items below so we have one two three levels of IRT in one panel in our mind we have first level categories and inside this first level category we see immediately the second and the third level ones the second level probably will not be clickable or just titles and then we have the list of items if we move to another first level category all the second and third one panel will change will adapt to the first level one so it's easy just to browse and see all the content that we have in a very very compact way and how we distinguish the levels of categories we design rules shape background color and weight of the text and spacing we have no doubt about which item belongs to which category thanks to this small hint um okay these are some some say hints uh, for creating a good uh, good uh, categorization mm -hmm. basically there are many ways of reading one word consistency and predictability mm -hmm. we, we don't i leave it there but we don't want to to spend too much time on this um when we have long lists huh? How can we arrange items the easy way to arrange items in a long list is alphabetically <coughs> then if we have some recognition that we, we can apply to the items we, we should do that for example we don't have the name of the font but also we use the font to write its name so we can recognize the font so all of them are in alphabetical orders if we know the name we'll find it quickly if we don't know the name we can browse and recognize them this is the all fonts section but this menu also have two other sections two more sections one are the frequently used fonts the fonts that have been used frequently or recently in this document these are automatically updated and the first section is the fonts defined for this document the styles the main styles so we have suggested ones depending on the, on the theme of your document the recent ones and the full list so we have a list with grouped in different ways of browsing the list complete by design by recency and it's easy because each section is separated from the next one with a small line so we have three containers Con all contained in a big uh, panel so there's no doubt they are the same semantically the same information but presented in different ways um, okay let's uh, skip this one uh, no okay let's let just say a couple of words about uh this is a strange concept about the information sense for this informable sense uh, to smell where the information is okay so we must give hints uh, about uh, uh, where the information is uh, and there are some uh, this one is more, probably more important some cases uh, in which we can detect uh, that this information is not clear the users will not know we will don't know what, what where to go 
especially when they open a page and they stay more more than a couple of seconds on that page and try to look here and there and then you, they, you see that uh, they are not sure where to go or there when they click on something in their mind they say let's try this so they are not confident on what they are doing or it is an objective measure if the back button is used too often if you measure a user interacting with our website and you see that the, the frequency when, by which they go back to the previous page is too high it means that the categories in the previous page is are not right and this is a good example of that in the bad sense of course because you never know which one of the boxes you should click usually you try one of these at the top and if not uh, you go back and try the next one and uh, it doesn't help that each of the second level pages is different from the others visually and semantically so there's nothing here that helps you orienting in this space this one is dangerously similar to the the first one from the visual point of view it looks like the same but it's totally different these are completely different websites these two also recall this one but with colors that have no meaning and if they add a meaning in the first page maybe they lose it in the second one the same colors are reused with different meanings you see these three oranges here which are, are different from this yellow we also had the orange in these four blocks here right? so one of the orange blocks boxes will expand to this part where three of them are also orange so we learn immediately that the color doesn't mean anything we don't learn the meaning of the color because it's not being used consistently so we navigate many times but it doesn't help us in navigating hmm? and also the same here this one with the um, green and red and blue we also have green and red and blue there but with totally different meanings so this is an example where every element is against you understanding uh, the structure of the information and also here they try to use icons to help navigation this is a survey website for creating surveys and you see that once you, once you know it you know that the first row of icons is for creating destroying uh, seeing surveys and the second row is for the questions in the survey but there are some icons that are repeated in, or very repeated very similarly so there are three guys here and three guys there the meaning of this is completely different from those so in some way they are trying to help you recognize something but they are not doing it consistently and so they are creating more confusion so you you always have to check icon by icon with the mouse with a popover that will tell you what this action will do hmm? so it's not at all um, easy hmm? so yeah, icons are especially a problem because they can solve you a lot of space problems but you need to be sure that they are recognizable so for example if you see here many icons also have a label especially that the ones that are less frequently used so the b for bold doesn't mean need any explanation but this strange icon here for shape fill and shape outline they spell it out hmm. uh, because they are easily they are easy to recognize once you know them but uh, you also need to have uh, some recognition with the text uh, instead of recalling uh, the meaning the real detailed meaning of the because also you know this icon for highlighting and the one for shape outline are very very similar in shape so there will be confusion if they didn't put them into different categories so we have the grouping you recognize all the grids the layout 
the title the spacing that separate the title from the rest all the same principles at work hmm? um, links are easy to recognize if you make them stand out visually and also you can you, uh, avoid uh, using general words click here should always be avoided always uh, create a link with the content that you will go to when clicking and uh, try to use uh, plain text and not uh, jargon or acronyms that you made up because your users will not uh, know them navigation is of many shapes but uh, today we we'll give a lot of space and a lot of details in navigation so maybe you have the main uh, category standing out but it also has some second level explanation to help users recognize and preview what's next when they click on something okay i'll skip form because we already and uh, we come to so all we have all these navigation tools mm, menus forms and so on links and then we come to the content the real text so nielsen did a search some time ago a lot of time ago 22 years ago asking how people read online so if i have a text what is the best way of making that text readable so the answer to this question how people read online is very easy they don't people don't read websites at all they scan them scanning these are images uh, captured with an eye tracker and a tracker is a device that you for usability studies for medical studies for accessibility basically it uh, it's a camera a set of cameras that look at you when you're using a screen and they look uh, they they see the detect where you're looking with your eyes so where your eyes are looking at these are heat maps uh, where the heater regions are where most people look for more time there are many kind of diagrams you can make uh, and they say that for example this is a google results page where are people looking at the first items in the first column the first item on the right because there was a highlighted content here and the navigation at the bottom all the rest was never glanced not read not even glanced they didn't even look at that your eyes never went there never it could be the most important news in your in your life you didn't read it in, we, your eyes decided which were the most important part of the page and you read some words of the section not all the text only words here and there even wikipedia which is a linear structure is not being read usually they are usually there are this f-shaped or e-shaped or t-shaped diagrams where people look at the left column and then go to the right on some points that attract their attention so usually if you want to design a website you should know that the people will usually look here in the top left quadrant then around that with some preference to the right and then everything which is on the bottom or on the right especially in the top right will not be why not the top right because we know that the search here that the login is there we don't need to look there because there will not be content our brain knows not to look there hmm? and uh, the interesting part is that for example people spend a lot in advertising but the name of the product was never looked at there were good reasons why they didn't look at but <laughs> Uh, in this case this is better you see they made also people look at this uh, people like the same attention with the body of the model with the name as the name of course the logo was never read but this slogan was so people in advertising use this eye tracking a lot hmm? and basically what designers build uh, this is a nice picture build a web page full of detailed content usually only see some parts of the pages those parts of the pages that match their current interest in that moment so if i want to buy a ticket i only see the book uh, uh, buttons if i want to uh, to uh, check my frequent miles 
I only see that. I don't care what's in the right, so I don't care what are the other buttons. I will immediately select uh, that part, even if, uh, if it's the first time I go there. I have a very quick filtering mm -hmm. in information. For us, what does it mean? That we should help the user find those more quickly. We shouldn't rely on a lot of explanations. They're useless. Hmm? Should, we should just provide hints to go to the right part. This is another experiment that Nielsen did. Uh, they took a, a, a piece of text. This is only, only a fragment that described uh, something about Nebraska or whatever. This was taken from a book. And then they tried to modify it in different ways. And they measured the usability improvement. So how much faster, quicker people could understand the text. They made different experiments, make it shorter with about half the word count. So from 100 words, they went down to 50. And uh, they had 55% more, of course, half the pages, half the words, 50% uh, more the time. Uh, the, the, the speed scannable layout so instead of a long text uh, making a list compared to the original one 47 percent so each of these modifications had a noticeable improvement over the baseline and while all of them were combined they made it 124 percent means that more than two two times faster to browse this content that has less words, it doesn't have any hyperboles or great sounding words, but just goes down to the bear to the facts uh, with the objective language and is scannable. Scannable means vertically aligned with the patterns that we see in eye tracking. People go there and then glance right when they find something interesting. So we also perceive that we, we never we had a look at the first line. I th if I ask you, what did you read? You don't remember. But if you have a look at the last line, probably you can remember something, at least what this paragraph is about. Hmm? It tells you before you start reading. So let's put content at the top and where people expect to find content. Don't put content where people expect to find ads uh this is an important issue here and finally uh people say they try to overuse this suggestion of putting content above the folder they try to cram everything inside the first screenful no you should put interesting content in the first screenful and then if the context is interesting people will scroll down because they know they will find something good if the first page contains only irrelevant information people will infer that okay if the best information that you had is this one the rest will be worse it's not worth my time scrolling down hmm? so try to really convey information and content in the first screenful the brain learns to avoid uh, uninteresting content so they we develop we developed we already developed a form of banner blindness if you look at these heat maps, there are banners in this page here, here, there, the top. All these are aligned. <laughs> None of them was even glanced once. We don't see that. We have ad blockers today, okay, but even if we didn't have them, we won't read. That's why uh, advertisements are becoming more and more invasive, because we are learning not to see them. It's normal, okay? It's our defense. We are interested in the content, not in the ads. Not in the ads. This also means that uh, if you want to create a message that is important to read, your first instinct would be, let's make it red, big and flashy. People will never see it because their brain will classify it as an ad and you will not see it. So even important messages should have carefully selected differently from the rest huh? maybe a slight background slight of the grid slightly larger text that makes them stand out from the rest of the content but not be 
alien to the rest of the content if it's something alien too flashy too colorful with strong words for our brain it's an ad especially if it's on the top or on the right column of our website hmm? and so this is bad news for people that are made their livings in so, um, a lot of uh, if you search google for banner blindness most of the results you find are uh, consultant companies that tell you how to uh, avoid banner blindness to make people look at the banners because for the advertisements it's good they want to sell your ads and so on okay we are interested at the, at the reverse of course we 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 must know that ad ads are dead hmm? people don't know that but they are dead uh, and so we know we we must avoid uh, no, to misclassify real content with ads okay uh, oh sorry I'm a bit uh, uh, out of time uh, the, the last slide I just uh, has nothing to do with the design visual design but we found this uh, resource here uh, where it's a Italian resource uh, for the government uh, where they they distribute a lot of information and guidelines and style guides also CSS files and so on for creating websites for the public administration so maybe your website is not in this category but if it is probably there's a lot of content that is already read to re ready to cut and paste probably so maybe it's worth a look okay thanks for everything so for going over time